The next event on God's timeline is the rapture of the church. Paul said to the early church in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay, Paul is saying, don't worry about your loved ones who have died because the rapture has not taken place yet, but it's going to, and it's the next event. He says those which are asleep, meaning those loved ones who have already died, uh, don't, don't sorrow. I mean, you can, you'll be sorrowful, but not like those who have no hope because Jesus is going to bring them back with him when he appears in the air to come to get us. These people in Thessalonica were afraid that the rapture had taken place and that there, or the rapture had not taken place yet and that their loved ones died and their loved ones were going to miss it. But no, their soul was already in heaven and them God was going to bring back with them when he comes to get those who are alive. Okay, so this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go before them which have already died. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. It is indeed a comfort to the Christian for so many reasons. A few are we will see our Savior. We'll see our loved ones who have died and already been with them for a while. We'll get a super new body and be done with pain and sickness and death, and we will be taken out before the wrath of God falls on a sinful world. Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, For God has not appointed us to wrath. All through the Bible, it's called the day of vengeance, the day of wrath. The tribulation is the seven-year tribulation is called the day of God's wrath. Paul says we are not appointed to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That means the salvation of our soul and also of our body. Our body whether dead or still alive will be salvaged out of this sinful world at the rapture when we are caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So, church, we need to be comforting each other and building each other up and saying, Hey, the Lord is coming back soon. Are you ready? I am so ready. But I know I need to be telling more. I need to be convincing more of the truth of the gospel of our lovely Lord Jesus. He died for us. And when you accept him as your savior, you get a free ticket out of here. <laughs> he paid our debt that we owed and we don't have to do it. We don't have to go to hell and pay our own sin debt. But let me go on. All right, then after the rapture, the next event on God's timeline is known as the tribulation period. And it will be seven years of the most horrible trouble the world has ever known. Yes, we go through troubles, which is another word for tribulation. We Christians go through troubles now. We go through our tribulations now. But it is nothing like when the wrath of God is going to be unleashed on this world. The prophet Jeremiah calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Israel is going to be saved. There's a remnant 
of Israel that will be saved, but they're going to have to go through a whole lot before that time gets here. Matthew 24, for the, the most part, takes place in the tribulation. He talks a little bit about Titus coming in in AD 70 and uh, that time period, but for the most part, every bit of Matthew 24 is a tribulation chapter. The focus of the tribulation is on Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. But any Jew or Gentile who doesn't accept Jesus as Savior now will be left here to go through it. The purpose of the tribulation is to prepare Israel for their king and their kingdom. It is a time of preparation for Israel's restoration and conversion. It's also the time of God's wrath on this sinful world. The Apostle Paul tells us again that we're not appointed to wrath. We're not appointed to wrath. We are not appointed to wrath because Christ endured the wrath of God for our sin on the cross. Anyone who doesn't want to be here for the tribulation can accept God's free gift of salvation now during this, the church age that we are now living in. Jesus is our rock of escape now. In Matthew 24, Jesus is not talking about his coming for the church. A lot of people try to make it out to be a, a rapture chapter. It is not talking about his coming for the church. He's talking about his second coming to earth to set up a physical kingdom on earth. There are no signs for the rapture, but we can know that if we see the signs of his second coming to this earth, and we know that we go up at least seven years earlier than his second coming, we go up at least seven years earlier in the rapture, then we can know that we better be getting ready, don't you think? Because we can see signs for the second coming right now. The book of Daniel gives a lot of prophecy concerning the last days of Jewish history. Then in chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 4, Daniel is told to shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And one said, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? This is the same thing the disciple asked in Matthew 24, How long till the end? And I heard the man clothed in linen swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. That word, the words time, times, and a half would mean the last three and a half years of the tribulation, and then it will be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Those things were sealed when Daniel was living. He didn't understand it. But the wise ones in the latter days who have been studying God's words because the words Daniel heard are not closed up anymore. They're not sealed anymore. They were only to be sealed until the time of the end. And hey, that time is now. We're living in the last days. We're living in the time of the end. We are living in a time now where we can understand so much more than any living in any other age could ever understand. Knowledge has been increased. Many are running to and fro. That book is not sealed anymore. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? For many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. 
verse 5, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We see all this. We see all of these things every day and it's getting worse and worse and worse. But the next thing we Christians will not be here to see. Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. The holy place is the temple. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. We see all the signs that Jesus lists, except there is no temple standing yet in Israel. The holy place in verse 15 would be the temple, and it will be in Jerusalem. But that is no problem for us who are expecting to go up in the rapture at any time. The most important thing for us to see is not a temple, but that there is an Israel right there, right now, in that land, ready to erect one just as soon as they get the word that they can do it. They already have the furnishings ready to put in it. Our generation is the only generation since the time Jesus spoke these words that has seen all of the signs come together at one time, including Israel being in her land. In Matthew 24, verses 32 through 33, Jesus says, Learn a parable of the fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel. Not going into it today, but by comparing Scripture with Scripture, it's thought that Jesus is saying that along with all the other signs given is that Israel will be a nation again and that the generation that li lives to see all, A-L-L, -L, all these things come to pass, can know that his coming is near even at the door, is what Jesus says. Matthew twenty-four thirty-three. when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This should give the Christian so much hope and so much comfort that Jesus may come in the air at any time to take us to be with him. We are the generation that has seen all of these signs come together at one time. Up until 1948, there was no Israel. For over 2,000 years, there was no Israel. My mother's generation saw it happen. And ever since then, the signs have been growing more and more and more intense. Knowledge has been increased, like Daniel, Daniel's prophecy says. Knowledge will be increased. I have some books by Clarence Larkin, written in 1918 and 1919. In these books, he told that Israel would be a nation in the time of the end. He didn't live to get to see it, but he knew it was coming because the Bible said it. He tells in his books about Revelation 11 and the two prophets laying dead in the streets, beheaded. Uh, for three days, they'll lay there. I think it's Elijah and Moses. And um, then... After three days, life is going to enter into them and they'll be caught up to heaven. But he had no idea how all the world would see them. The Bible says all the world's going to see it. But now we know it can be seen as it happens from a screen in our homes called TV. Think, 
think how knowledge has been increased in so many ways in such a short time. Jesus is speaking to his Jewish disciples in Matthew 24 when he says in verse 15, When you see the abomination of desolation, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. In the first part of the seven-year tribulation, Jerusalem will be crowded with Israelites. More and more and more are going to Israel every day, and they're going to keep on going. The Antichrist will have made some sort of peace agreement with Israel. Let me stop right here and start over. The prophecy concerning Israel is so amazing. It starts way back in Deuteronomy saying, you're going to be scattered, but you're going to be regathered. It's just so amazing to study that. And I've got some lessons on my YouTube channel. If you'll go back and look through those Deuteronomy lessons, that uh, it's just prophecy, fulfill prophecy. It's so amazing. So anyway, <laughs> in the first part of the seven-year tribulation, Jerusalem will be crowded with Israelites. The Antichrist will have made some sort of peace agreement with Israel and the surrounding nations so that they will be able to have their temple. And they will once again have their rituals, their ceremonies, their sacrifices. And their temple probably won't be as magnificent as the other temples. It could be a tent or a tabernacle type structure for a while with the plans of, of um, rebuilding one as magnificent as King Solomon's one day, but that's not going to happen. But there will be a beautiful one standing during the millennial kingdom age when Jesus rules and reigns from that very place. But during this first part of the tribulation, the world will think everything is just fine and dandy. There's going to be a one world government and a one world religion at that time. We can see the world gearing up for that now, for that one world order. There will be peace at last, and for a while, everyone will be happy, happy, happy. For one thing, we pesky Christians will all be gone with all the rigmarole we try to preach to people every day. But in the middle of the seven years, the Antichrist will set up an image in the temple and will demand to be worshipped as God. The Jews will then recognize this as the abomination of desolation the prophet Daniel spoke of and they will know it's time to go. Jesus said, flee to the mountains when you see it. Many Bible scholars with good reasons and lots of scripture to back it up think the mountains the Jewish people will run to will be a place called Petra. In another study I did called Job, a picture of the tribulation saint, um, I talked a little about the land of Edom, so I won't go into all that again except to say that Job lived in Uz, which was in Edom. Petra is in the same area. Job is a picture of Israel going through the tribulation. Edom was and still is enemy territory to Israel ever since the days of Esau and Jacob. Today, the area is known as Jordan, and about 95% is populated by Muslim people of the Islamic religion. They're not known as Edomites today, but instead are known as Arabs or Palestinians. Besides that, all the other areas surrounding Israel today are Islamic and still not friendly toward them either. Since 1948, when God brought the Jews back to Israel, the stage is being set for these, the latter days, and for when, after the seven-year tribulation, Israel will once again be blessed and possess all of that land promised way back in the book of Genesis to Abraham, and they will get even more than originally promised due to the harsh treatment they've received from the Edomites all through the years. It's exciting, exciting, exciting times in which we live when you're a Bible believer and you read and study the Bible because we can see it just come into pass every day. Um, even though we're having to endure this worldwide COVID pestilence and see the beginnings of how the world will come to the point of having a one world government under the Antichrist, it's still exciting because 
we can see, we can know it's not going to be long until Jesus comes in the air to take us Christians out in the rapture. So at one time, one point or one on one side, it's very troubling, COVID and all this junk going on in our world. But then on the other side, it's, ah, Bible prophecy being fulfilled, more confirmation. Oh, hey, I can trust my Bible. Many have gotten away from the teaching of the rapture, uh, but I still believe, along with many, many, many other reliable, trustworthy people, that we go up in the air to meet Jesus. And shortly after then, the seven-year tribulation begins on this earth. I'd rather just see Jesus come on and get us because I'm selfish, but it's good that we're here seeing the stage being set. It's a warning to us that we don't have much time left to be telling people, to be giving our loved ones a warning and our friends warning. It gives us a little more time to tell people, get ready. So it's good that we're here. Are you using this time that you have left wisely? If you're not telling people about Jesus in some way, you are not using this time wisely. Share the gospel with them. If you can't do it yourself, share a YouTube video with them. Share a Facebook post with them where people are giving out the word, telling people how to be saved. Use your time wisely. In the book of Daniel, it says those that are wise will turn many to righteousness and they will shine as the stars. I, I can't remember the verse uh, just how it says it, but it's a beautiful verse. <laughs> Daniel, It's in Daniel chapter 12, I believe. Y'all look it up. We are once again living in biblical times, and we are witnessing what is compared to birth pangs in the Bible that will get more and more and more intense toward the end. We're seeing it all come together. The wars, the earthquakes, Israel in her land again, the hatred, the offenses, the pestilence. The prophet Daniel said knowledge will be increased and people will be running to and fro. Never before has so much knowledge been at our fingertips. Just Google it. <laughs> Who would have ever thought a person in the United States could speak to a person in Australia or Africa as if they were seated beside them having a conversation? Who would have ever thought it? And as far as people running to and fro, a person can go to the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States today in less than four hours. Before the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, only 152 years ago, um, people had to go across the United States, States by stagecoach. The cost was $1,000, which was big, big, big back then, and it took five or six months to do it and involved crossing rugged mountains and deserts and Indian territory and who knows what else. A person was blessed to make it at all. Well, the railway was completed in 1869 and then to go across the United States took about five days by train. That was 152 years ago. Not that long ago when you think about it. Now, in less than an hour, it can be accomplished by some military jets. Think of the progress made in such a short time, not to mention trips to outer space and to the moon. Just saying, people are definitely running to and fro in these latter days. I googled how far can a person travel in less than a day, and I read an article posted in 2019 about the world's longest flight, and then it was said to be a nonstop flight from New York City to Sydney, Australia. It was a test trip that Qantas, Qantas hopes to be offering by 2022. It was a 10,100-mile nonstop trip which took 19 and a half hours to go to the other side of the world. 19 and a half hours, less than a day. P 
people are running to and fro and knowledge has been increased. And then on a lesser note, but very large to us today, have you ever, ever in your life seen so many people being offended? And I'm not just talking about lost people that don't know Jesus. Now it's Christians being offended at Christians just as much as the unsaved or offended over everything. If one uses only the King James Bible, others get offended because they think we look down on them because they don't. And some who do use only the King James Bible use use it and get all high and mighty and do offend others because they don't. So that's gone on for years and years between Christians. Right now it's over the vaccine. One gets it, another doesn't. Each thinks the other is offended because one got it and the other didn't, or one did and or didn't and the other did. It's just ridiculous, ridiculous. The answer to that is just do what you feel you need to do and keep your eyes on Jesus and off of yourself and off of your little feelings and you won't be offended. Not for long anyway. You'll get over it pretty quick. Get back in the Word. Get your eyes on Jesus. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Psalms 119, 165. Sometimes we have to work at it, but it's worth it. The focus of Matthew 24 is on Israel going through the tribulation. We see the beginnings of it today, but we're not going to be here to go through it. Verse 10 of Matthew 24 tells us many will be offended. Aren't we seeing it? Many will be hated. Many will be betrayed. Luke tells us by parents and brethren and kinfolk and friends, and some will cause you to be put to death. Pick up a newspaper, turn on the news. We hear the stories of family members turning on each other and murdering each other every day. In the tribulation, it will be so much worse. After the rapture, there won't... Um, after the rapture, there will be some who get saved who had never listened before. Some are going to have an eye-opening experience. And their families will turn against them and betray them and even turn them into the Antichrist Mafia when things start getting really bad. They'll turn them in for money or um, food or, or just for government favor. Family members who get saved will probably, hopefully, try to convince those they love about Jesus, but they'll be hated for it because it's going to be very dangerous to, <laughs> to turn to Jesus then, very, very dangerous to turn to Him then. So they're going to be hated even more than we're hated now when we try to tell people about Jesus, especially Jewish and Muslim people. How could they turn to this man Jesus as Messiah? The Jewish people who have awakened to the truth will know what's going on. And, and for sure, when they see the abomination Jesus speaks of in Matthew 24 and Joseph uh, Daniel spoke of in his book, they'll know what to do and they will know they got to run. Those who are in Judea make it clear he's talking to Jews and not to the church in today's age. The greatest danger at first will be to those in Jerusalem. Uh, he talks about them being on the housetops and hearing the news and, and the housetops back then or like our decks, our patios here, uh, or the housetops now there are, are like that. They may be on, on the rooftops enjoying the company of friends when their cell phone rings with the news that the Antichrist has set up an image in the temple and, and he's demanding to be worshipped. Some will take heed to the warning. Some will laugh and hang up their phone and say, ah, oh, that was just my fanatical brother at it again using scare tactics. Some may be uneasy about the news but go on about their business. But there will be many, many, many who have been reading and listening to what they're saved. Jewish brethren have been preaching. And uh, they think, what do we do? Do we grab some clothes? And then they remember the words, don't go back into your house, just run. They may remember stories heard from their ancestors of the time when Hitler took over and the Jews didn't listen. They stayed in their homes. They didn't leave when they should. They thought, this is happening in other places, but surely it won't come to us. 
but it did. One day the Germans were at their doorsteps, and then it was too late. Maybe a lot of these tribulation people will learn, and they will, and they won't look back. Jesus said, don't even go back in your house to pack. Just run and pray that your flight is not in the winter or on the Sabbath. A lot of Bible scholars believe it's going to be to the ancient cliff city of Petra that they'll run. And there are many, many scriptures that to me confirm that it will be. And in the next study, uh, I'm going to try to make it the next study. I know I've been slow in getting these. Please forgive me and please pray for me that I will do better. <laughs> so I, I hope <clears throat> in my next study, excuse me a moment, <clears throat> I hope in my next study to get you more about Petra because it, it's amazing. And uh, Petra is in the same area where the Israelites of old wandered in the wilderness. You know, everything comes back again. History repeats itself. God gives us examples after example after example in the Old Testament. Things that happen are going to happen again. They're going to go back to that wilderness, and there God is going to take care of them, nourish them, feed them, love them, and there they're going to turn to Jesus. Parts of the movie Indiana Jones was filmed there, and you can go to YouTube today and see spectacular photos of that city of Petra, and you should do that. Oh, my, it's awesome. The Israelites have always known of God to be their rock, Today we know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is God in the flesh. And that's what the Apostle Paul said, speaking of the Israelites in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. He says, And they did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. They're going to run to the red rock city of Petra, Jesus is our hiding place. They know God is their hiding place and God is the rock. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus now for everything you need. In the Bible, Petra will be the hiding place for the Jews for the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And while there, God's going to care for them as he did for their ancestors many years ago. I hope this study has been a blessing to you and Pray for me as I try to get the rest of these studies about Petra on for you. And I want to thank those so much, you ladies that have commented on the studies and, uh, and let me know that you've been listening to them and that they've been blessing you. Thank you so much for that. That means so much to me, and it encourages me so much that I know you're listening and waiting for the next one. Uh, God bless you.